Hi everyone, welcome to Tapping Your Creativity in my studio today. I am so excited to um, be here today, live all the way from, I'm in Minneapolis, and Dana Dion, which are, is our guest artist, will be joining us live from Sydney, Australia. How incredible is this? This is unbelievable. I am so excited for her to join us any minute now. Um, there she is, and uh, I'm going to have her join us, hopefully, here pretty soon. So, there we go. And she's going to join us any minute from Sydney, Australia. This is unbelievable. And hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I am so excited for you to be joining us all the way from Sydney, Australia tonight here. Morning Incredible. for you there, right? <laughs> yeah, nine o'clock in the morning here. Wow. It's, 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 this is incredible. Technology, we can do so many things. So thank you, everyone that is joining in. Thank you so much for hanging out and, and, and uh, tuning in in a special time, which is six o'clock our time. It's not my normal um, interviewing time so thank you um so thank you. dana thank you for um you're my first australian artist to join me yes. in this project i hope the first of many to yes. pave the way and yes. um i can you please tell us a little bit about who you are um who you are as an artist uh where do you live and where do you work okay my name is dana dion and I'm a contemporary landscape artist. I'm based in Sydney, Australia, and I work out of my home studio, which is here, it's underneath my house. You are so lucky and blessed that you can work from your home. I need to work from my home. I'm not a nine to five painter, or I'm not very organized like that. I paint whenever I feel like it, which is yeah. most of the time, but it also might be after dinner, I'll come down here and I'll work until midnight or 1 a.m. and then I'll go to bed or sometimes I wake up really early or I can't sleep. Then it's really handy for me to have my studio here at home. Yes. So tell us, um, how has um, COVID been um, in that part of the world and how has it affected you? Yeah. So in the beginning of it, it I just, um, it was just pretty numbing and I felt I didn't, I didn't feel anything really. I didn't know what to feel. And so it put me on a freeze mode and I couldn't really do anything. I wasn't inspired or, you know, I just, I just had to make a lot of sense of the situation because the way I paint is quite from my senses and my feelings. And I just didn't know what to feel and what to think and what to sense. I was in a way in a freeze zone for the beginning of it anyway. And then um, I signed How up for... Pardon? I was going to ask, how did you get out of the funk? Well, I was lucky because Steve and I only uh, did an online course that he put up and I just jumped online to, to sign up for it. And that, that took me out of my hibernation. <laughs> <That's fine. Yeah. laughs> so that was really good. It worked out really well for me. Yeah, I think that, you know, uh, as artists, we need something and uh, to get out every morning and just to do something. And I think that, you know, um, either being a workshop or just, uh, you know, going downstairs to be in your studio, um, you're in a beautiful area because you have shown me before and you will show everyone. Yeah. Um, so I think that, you know, that atmosphere that you are living in also is your uh, inspiration, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. But also the interaction with people, you know, and so I think with the COVID, there was no interaction with anybody, just on the phone, right. I guess, my friends, all of a sudden, everybody started calling me, but um, I really miss that. So I think when we get into a routine and we get into some sort of a, you know, a way that we work, if that changes, it takes a little bit to just adjust, that's all, but we do make adjustments. We're very malleable people. Yeah. So. So tell us, uh, then, how did you get into art? How did your journey start? Okay. So, you know, 
I've always been an artistic person. I think that people who are artistic, they can be artistic in many ways. It just took me a long time to find what it was that I really was passionate about. So as a child, I used to play music and I used to dance different genres of dancing and things like that. I always used to draw at home and collect um, things and assemble them together and all that sort of thing. And then as life went on, I got very busy. I was... Um, well, actually, well tell school, us your background because it's so interesting. You've lived in so many places, so... Yeah. So anyway, I, I, I'll go just a little bit back first. So at okay. high school, I okay. signed up to all the art courses. I knew I loved art, and I signed up to all the art courses, and that's really all the courses I got A plus in. Everything else was not that good. And I even the teacher there let me paint murals on the school walls and things like that. So I, I, was, I knew that I liked painting and I liked doing creativity. But then I got very busy with uh, a business that I opened. I opened a, a three fitness centers in Vancouver that I owned and operated for 12 years. So I, I didn't really do art, but my centers were quite creative as well, just in the way I was running them and the way I decorated them and the way I, the way I handled them. But then after that, I started, um, take, when I sold them after 12 years, I started getting more interested in art and did a lot of courses in, in different mediums from pastels to watercolors to oils. Just trying to find something that I like. With a background, right. that, you're, with a background that you're mentioning, I moved around a lot because I was born in Israel and then my family and us, we moved back and forth from Israel to Africa a couple of times. Wow. And then, and then we moved back to Israel. And then, in, and then when I was 14, we moved to Vancouver, Canada, where I did the high school thing and then had my businesses there. So when I sold my businesses, we moved to London. And we, my husband and I and three children, we moved to London. And in London, I did all the art courses I could lay my hands on because I didn't have a business and I, I was a mom and I could do all the art courses I wanted. And at that time, I got into a lot of paintings on uh, doing all the paint effects on the walls that used to be really fashionable then and also revamping furniture, restoring furniture and painting furniture in different ways. Yeah. And when we, then we moved here to Sydney, Australia. And when we said, and that's when it really hit you. That's when it really hit me. And that's yeah. when I really started finding and growing as an artist and growing yeah. as a person as well. The, the, the landscape here and the atmosphere here and where we live, it has really spoken to me and influenced everything I do today. And you probably bring your background with you, even if you don't think about it. It's probably so inside of you, you know, being in Israel and Africa and Canada and London and now in Sydney. Like, I think that it's such a rich history that you're probably bringing into your painting. Yeah. yeah but, and, and I think that's how it all came about, what I'm painting. So... I, I, I just felt very lost and I felt that I didn't really belong anywhere. I lived in so many places. It was just like too, too many places to feel like you belong anywhere. You know, it's like yeah. wherever you go, even in my birthplace, I don't really belong. I'm different. And I think that when I started painting the landscapes was because I wanted to, to identify with a place. I wanted to belong to a place. And so I used to paint landscapes that were more recognized as landscapes. You actually saw horizon line and you saw tree, you know, motifs of trees. And it was just me searching and wanting to, to find a place where I belong and just feel really comfortable in. And that drew me in a lot into my process because I, I, I needed to, to, to do that. Right. So I spent a lot of time doing that. Over time, I always say I was kind of cured from that belonging <laughs> situation. <laughs> um, my my work has become more 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 abstracting from the landscape, so it's not so much um, what you see, but it's becoming more of what I feel when I'm in the landscape. 
but still you grab that inspiration from the landscape. You just, when you go ahead and paint, you just transform it into something that maybe it's not visible to the naked eye, but it is inside yeah. of you, it's there. Yeah, and I live in the landscape. And Correct. I look at it all the time and I love it. My, we're all the time bushwalking and kayaking and being on the water and the beaches here in Australia, the landscape here just lends itself to outdoor living. Yeah. And I just, that's where I feel the best when I'm in the landscape and because it's such a vast country and there's not a lot of people living here. Right. You go to these places and you're kind of alone as well. There's not hardly anybody around, which is so relaxing and soothing. And I just, that's what gives me my inspiration. But you said that you have a community of artists where you are, right? So you have yes. uh, people that, that go to your homes. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, so where I live, I live in Greenwich in Sydney, and there's a lot of artists around this area. And we have an arts trail once a year, which is always the first weekend in November, and people just can come through the artist stores. There's about 25 of us on average participate in this. And it's from jewelers to sculptors to photographers, artists, whatever you want, bead work, anything. Oh, that's and fantastic. Tons and tons of people all from around the area come through. It's really fun and nice. And then we meet as well. All of us meet every now and then. Yeah. That's amazing. So um, I see two paintings that you have behind you. Yeah. I would love for you to start giving us a little bit of a of a taste of what your work looks like and, and if you can talk to us uh, about it, that'd be fantastic. Okay, so these two are quite recent works I've done. Um, and they're again about the energy and the feeling that I get while I'm in the last I'm going to turn, sorry, I'm going to turn off the comments real quick so okay. we can actually see the artwork. Okay. And then I'll turn them on for questions at the end. Okay. Go ahead. So they're, play, they're painted outside. Okay. Uh, they're on outside and I, paint, I take them out, I put them on the ground, and I just take a very limited palette with me, maybe just two, three colors, not more than that. And I just really try and, I'm, I don't try, it just comes, I, I go out and do this when I'm feeling, so it doesn't go the other way around. Yeah. And I just start making the marks. I'm dancing around the canvas and just going around where, 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 you know, just kind of like this. <laughs> yeah. You're dancing with your canvas, I guess. Yeah. I'm not really planning anything. Just this is the ultimate thing, really, is when you're not planning because the, the, your head and your thinking and your planning gets in. And I'm trying to, to not do that. So when I go out, I just, just, just let it be. Just so do you, do you, when you have it on the floor, are you standing? Are you sitting? How, how is your position? I'm over it like this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not right in the back. That's it. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. And sometimes I go down on my knee and I'm reaching here and I'm reaching there. And I often use the really long brushes as well. So I've got a few of these and I've got a few that are, can you see? Uh, oh, Yeah. Here. Yeah. Can you show us the very tip of it and, and see how you attach that? Attach it. My husband does this for me. He puts a lot of wire and string around it. Sometimes we stick a nail into it. Oh, that's great. Because what that does, uh, for people that don't know, is that it gives you very little control exactly. um, of, of your strokes. And so yeah. that way you, you really have uh, zero, zero control on your thoughts of what it's going to look like. Yeah. But also saves you back. It's like it's like grooming the floor, you know, sweeping the, the floor. <laughs> it <laughs> is. It is. But I like that it doesn't give you any control because then you let go. Yeah. You truly yeah. let go. I've got more here as well. Like uh, I've got Jason here with me doing all my filming. Thank so. you, Jason. <laughs> Hi. I've got like this sort of stuff, you know, just like bamboo sticks with my little brush put at the end here like this. And I work with them. And then I've got the stuff that I buy and they're already long. So I use them quite a lot, really because I do paint on the floor. A lot. And it, it helps you too for your back. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> then you don't have to bend as much. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I do with that. Yeah. So that's how I start anyway. 
And I, I take my paintings quite far in that way. And um, do you use any mediums while you're out there or, or not necessarily? You just go with the paints and then you put it up on the wall? Do you finish them on the wall? I finish them on the wall. Um, okay. When I start them though, I usually like to have quite a lot of buildup of paint on my canvas. And that might be just one color or a combination of colors. I very rarely work on just plain canvas. And when I build up the canvas initially, I would always build it up with paint with a medium. I don't need water much. Okay. Okay. I only need water to clean my brush. What kind of medium what kind of medium do you use to build up? So I've been using these ones here lately and I just use the Liquitex ones. Yeah. So I've got the they come in a gloss and a matte. They don't actually come in a satin and I just mix them together to and the, Yeah. Yeah. And I, I paint with them. So when I, yeah, I just, I dip my brush basically in them and then I dip it in my paints. So when you use No acrylic, water, no water. Yeah. yeah. So let's go back and talk about the paintings. Um, if, if you can show us a little bit closer, Jason, just a little bit closer so we can get in and see really the texture. Um, so what did you use in this particular painting? As far as mediums, you mean, or? No, did, did you use charcoal? Is it mixed media? Yes. Or is it just I acrylic? Use, yeah, I, I use charcoal and Conte and pencils. I don't know what I use. I just use everything. I don't Everything I don't that you have? Yeah. I do you use, do you, do you use collage? No, I don't use no. collage. Okay. No. Okay. So I think um, you can see, you can see here the charcoal -y bits. And then I really like it when they just get swooshed in my paint and they make a mud and dirt. Yeah, I, like I can it. definitely see that. And I, I love the mark making and you can see the activation of the, of the raw canvas. And then on top of it, you can see all the layers that come through. Yeah, so the layers I build on top and on top and on top and on top. And to me, it's, uh, it, it's me getting in touch with the layers of my, of my life and the layers of all the years that I've moved and needed to resolve a lot of issues about the movie. I love so, that. Can so we see the painting next to it, Jason, please? Yeah. So it's really the layers of that. You know, I think about these things when I'm painting them. Yeah, this color palette is, um, it does remind me of, uh, of where you are, which we're gonna see shortly. Um, with the greens and the blues and the water and yes. um, it's yes. definitely a more nature uh, yes. based. Uh, yeah. Do you agree? Yes. And also be because of where I am and I'll show you, there's a lot, a lot of trees and vegetation. And yeah. when we, when I'm looking outside my windows or outside my studio, I'm, I'm looking at all the branches interacting with what's behind them and what's in front of them. Yeah, and, uh, I love that. And all the branches create windows of views, you know, where you can see between. So like often people come in here and they look at the trees that here, what it's got outside. The trees that we have, this is my moving wall. Oh, the moving That's wall. Amy. Oh my goodness, you guys, look at that view. This is unbelievable. Wow. So a lot of my friends say, oh, really nice. You live in a really nice spot, but too bad about the trees. And I'm like, but I love the trees because they yes. create windows. And oh. all of these are little different shapes. And you can what a beautiful, look. what a beautiful setting you have out there. And it's literally Thank you. your backyard. Thank you. Yes. And so you're looking at, I see things between the little shapes that the branches create. I see and that. Sometimes there's a bolt coming through or a kayak coming through and it might be red and it might be yellow and it might be blue. And we get sailboats coming through here. So it's just wonderful, wonderful subject. And it's not even, I'm not painting it, but I'm just painting what it's making me feel. Yeah. How, so, so how I'm, go yeah. ahead, go ahead. Yeah, just how I, just the energy it, it leaves in me, looking at it or being in it. 
So can we go back now and see that painting? Because it makes so much sense. Everything you're telling us, I can see the little windows that you're talking about and how they crisscross each other. And um, I, I can totally see it now. Um, if we can move in a little closer there, that'd be great. Um, yes. So you can see all the little windows that you're talking about and the color palette and I mean, it really it's, resonates it's with everything it. that you just said. Yeah, and kind of seeing through it, and you're not really sure what you're seeing because it's a bit far and it's a little bit obscure, but you can see, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I can like we that. move now to your movable wall and see what you have there? So this is, I also work a lot on paper. I work in conjunction. I do canvas and paper, and this is the works on paper. They're, they're kind of in process. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's great. Yeah. It's great to have different uh, things to be working on because like always you inform yourself from one to the other. So it is important to have many things at the same time. And also you're not committed to one. If right. you're working on one, you're very committed to it. You're just like honed in on it. You're constantly focusing on it. It's not working. It is working. I think for me, I need to get time away from it and I'll come here. And you can turn that, that uh, wall around, which is a fabulous thing. Yeah, I'm yeah. not going to make you do that, but. And, there's a, and also there's a wall behind it, you see? Oh, yeah. So you do have a lot of space in your, look at that. Wow. Look so at those blues. Lots of blues. Is that so, yeah. a newer painting too? Yeah, this is my painting. Yeah. Is, is it new? Uh, or newer, you've been working on it? Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's fabulous. I love the line on that one. It looks very horizontal compared to, yeah. you know, the other ones that we've seen that have yeah. more vertical lines. This is more yeah. like horizontal lines. Yeah. So I love to play with different compositions, not always get stuck in the same, you know, yeah. the same movement or the same rhythm or the same direction. Just always yeah. play around because... Otherwise, I get bored. Right. It's very easy to get bored sometimes when, when you do the same and thing. And yeah. So we have to amuse each other all the time. Yeah. It's just about amusing ourselves in the end of the day, isn't it? You know, it is. It is. We have an urge to create as creators, and it's, it's feeding something in us. And uh, for me, it's just feeding that amusement of, of creating these things, but also the process of while I'm doing them, I just really enjoy the actual process. So Which let's go now to see your paperwork um, yeah. that you have on the ground. Um, I've got some stuff here on the floor. Yeah. Uh, but again, I paint on the floor. Um, and when I paint on this size on the floor, it's in a way easier and I can be more stationary than when I paint on the huge canvases outside. Yeah. Um, and I've got these mats here that are super thick, they're gym mats, you see? Yes. So when my knees are on them, it's actually really comfortable. <laughs> yes, so you don't hurt your back or your knees as much. I don't hurt my back or my knees as much, no. So this is some work from paper, and um, I don't usually do this, but um, just a really good idea, sometimes, we were talking about this sample before, yes. is to, when you take a big piece of work like this or a large piece like this, it also can give you great ideas if you just um, do something like this where you yes. can see a small section of it and that can be an inspiration to a bigger painting. Yes, I love that. I, I, yes, we, you and I talked about that and the mat yeah. um, is brilliant because you really can inform yourself um, something that is working um, in a smaller piece, how do you then go into making maybe a bigger piece, yeah. piece of, so, of that? <laughs> so when I do this, I sometimes do this because, you know, sometimes you don't really know what I want to paint, what colors I want to use, what to really do to, to start. The start right. is important. And to do something like this, just look at a painting that you have and do that, that sometimes is a good start for another painting. So Correct. I, I don't mean say that the next painting would be exactly like this, but it, it helps me start something. So I'm For like, oh, sure. Yeah, really like this, you know, and this one has like 
Can we go in a little, can you zoom in a little bit so we can actually see what you're seeing? There we go. That's much better. And even if you can go in a little closer, that'd be great. Yeah. So it immediately gives you a frame and you can, you know, like move the frame, the size of the frame also. Um, yeah, you, you can move it around. So yeah. you can say, yeah. oh, I don't know, maybe a front like something here, you know? Right, right. Or and I, I know that you don't cut your, your work as I don't either, but um, for someone that really likes something that is not working um, for them on the rest of the piece, you can cut something to fit that mat and you have a absolutely. fabulous piece of art. There's no rules. This is the nice thing about art. There's absolutely no rules. Yeah. That's why I, I, it's a yeah. place where you can be totally free to do what you like doing. Nobody can tell you anything. You don't have to listen to anybody. Just do what you want to do. That's so good. tell me who, who inspires you? Who's your inspiration or yeah, who, who has been in your life that you can think uh, it has affected your work? Like people or artists? Artists, yes. So everybody, everybody inspires my work. Even my friends inspire my work. Going down Instagram and looking at images inspires my work. Everybody, everything and everybody inspires my work. But there's one person that I refer to and sticks to my brain in my head quite a lot. I've never met him, but he is, I've got some books here of him, and his name is Moshe Rosenthalis. Can you, Can you show us the, the book? Yes, great. I've got a few of his books here. And I okay. came across his exhibition when I was in Israel one time, and I just, fell in love, like it just stopped my heart when I looked at his work. And you can come here, Jason, just go over here. Um, he's not alive it's, anymore, he died about 10 years ago. But this is... Was he a, always a contemporary artist? Well, he was born in Lithuania in, uh, in 1922. Can you believe it? Look at the stuff. Wow, wow. And That's 1922? He, w he was born in 1922, oh, and sorry. he used to paint super highly realistic realism, social realism murals for the Red Army in Russia, in the Soviet Union. Yes. And wow. then he left the Soviet Union in 1952, and he came to Israel. Look at this. And he just totally changed his style, and he he was exposed to bright lights and local colors and the new country and new systems of government and new systems of everything and it affected his style of painting totally and i can so relate to this for sure when, because you moved, moved from one government to another government to yeah. another government when you move this is what happened but look at this the, the guy is like this is 1950 60 it's so contemporary and it's so modern it's so contemporary and modern for the, that time yes and what wow. he said there's a quote here from him and it says to simplify forms one has to work harder search use the imagination and and invoice one's intellect and emotion so oh, I, I really, love that. But this guy speaks to me a lot. Yeah. And when I saw his work, and I love his figure work as well, you know? So yeah. Yes. yes. It's fascinating. Wow. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. That's amazing. So, oops. That's him here. That's his name. Yeah. Wow. I, I love it as well. And um, what would you say, they, uh, Dana? to people at home who, um, right. you know, what, what, would you, what would you say if you wanted to give them some advice or, you know, how do you start? You started later in life. I think it's very valuable. I think that there is no age to start as an artist. I think that you can be an artist at any time, at any moment. Um, that's the beauty of art. So yeah. I think also depends what you're trying to get out of it. Uh, but generally speaking, I think that the basis of 
being a creator is that we have an urge to create. So that urge needs to be nourished. It needs to be looked after and it needs to, to be fed and given time. And while you're creating, it's really important to feel the, the enjoyment you're getting out of it. And remember those feelings that you have while you're creating them. They're very, very important. But you must be patient as well because it takes a long time and it takes a lot of your time because you need to, to do it a lot. In order to get better at it, that's all you got to do is just you got to do it. It's almost like if you want to be a good runner, you need to do a lot of running. You, if you want to be a good swimmer, you have to do a lot of swimming. And that takes over your life because if, if you want to be really good, that's what you got to do. So there's a lot of sacrifice in that. But if you, if you hang in there and you manage to, to, to remember the enjoyment you get while you're creating, then a lot of good comes out of it and a lot of benefits come out of it too. So I think that, that's what I would say. Yeah, I think that, you know, each one of us has such a different, you know, way of approaching art and what has given us. Um, but like you said, it's uh, to become more of a professional artist you have to, it's, it's a practice. And like everything else in life, you have to show up to your practice. So that means every day, you know, showing up, no one is telling you to do it except yourself. And yeah. so sometimes, you know, we need that little push to get through the day because we don't feel like painting or we don't feel like going to the studio, but we yeah. have to because we have a commission or we have something that, you know, we need to create. And the only way of doing that is be consistent and show up every day somehow, somewhere. And do the work. And do the work. I mean, I know that you're, you're a Pilates instructor, and so yeah. I know that that practice comes in that as well, correct? That's right. So just like everything else, if the more you do it, the better you get at it. But you have yes. to enjoy the journey. It is a journey. I always think you're not, not actually getting it. There's no specific goal or specific place that you're going to get to. It's, it's a journey. It's a, for me, it's a lot of self-discovery and just bettering myself as a person and as a creator. So it's just a journey. You need to enjoy every step of it, not just wait for the end result because there's no actual end result. It's a journey. That is, and, and you know what? I think that that is so true. There is no end result. In no, nothing, you know, no painting has an ending per se. No, you know, exactly. it, it just, it's, it, it's open to communication. It's open yeah. to a dialogue yeah. always. And so it's, it's a great thing to have that you can always have that dialogue with your painting. That's right. And it's always, the painting itself is always open to change as well. Because even if we think, oh, this painting is now finished, it's finished for now. Right, right. And we turn it around and we go somewhere else and we start something new yeah. and we revisit and, you yeah. know, and it, it, it kind of is that way. It's like that dance that I call it with your own paintings. and. Yeah. And it's an incredible dialogue that you can have with them. Exactly. And sometimes then you look at it again and you think, yeah, I really like you. You know, I, I don't want to change anything in you. This is really great. And sometimes you're like, oh, just a little bit. Yes. Or a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I want to show you my setup. I want to show you. How yes, I please. I want to see the whole thing. Stuff. Yes, um, please. So I've got my table here. I usually paint just on sheets of paper or even cardboard is really good as a palette. I don't have a specific palette, just paper or sometimes just on um, perspex okay. or cardboard from a box. That's what I paint on. Is that where and you paint uh, like small pieces, you would say? No, that's where I put all my paint. So I would actually take a, uh, take a can of paint or in this case. That's where your palette goes or where you're, yeah, you actually... Palette. That's okay. It. That's okay. It. So <laughs> okay. It and chuck it in here, and then I got it. Up the color, chuck it in here, and then in the end of the day, it all get, gets mixed up together. Yes. Yes. I yeah. love that. The mud that we call. <laughs> yeah. So I've got a big palette. Usually I'll empty all this and I'll just spread out. And then I have my paints that I put them in this cupboard or in this cupboard here. So You're very organized. I'm so impressed. I 
a little bit organized. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got like sections, like my mediums will be here and various other things. And then I've got, um, this is all for my acrylic paint. So I'll have tubes down here. Then I section it in colors. So this will be blues and greens, reds and yellows, and then little tubes in here. And then this is a variety of paints that I buy when I go to Vancouver. I love this stuff. It's I love their stuff too. It's called oh. Chrome. Oh, they I have make, that. I love they, that. They make it on Granville Island in Vancouver. It's and you really, can only find it there, right? Yeah. Yeah. But they do shipping. So I've got that and I've got my books. I've got my sink here. Which is essential. <laughs> which is very handy. Yes. I have a cart that I use uh, really for my oil paints. Now, I, I don't do a lot of oil painting. I used to do more, and I'm doing less and less. I'm more and more into acrylic. But uh, this is my oil cart. And I also use it the top. I use um, a lot of times for if I'm going to paint over there and my stuff is over here, I'll, I'll mix colors here and just work on the cart. Yeah, wow. Easier. Yeah. So when you paint uh, on the floor, do you paint outside where, where you just showed us? Yes. In that when patio? Paint, yes. When I paint canvases, I go out either on the patio or the grass area that we have. And when I paint on paper, it's usually just down here. On the floor okay. Here. Okay. Yeah. Wow. You have really, I mean, how incredible to be in that environment and paint every day where you are it's just a beautiful like it's just yeah. it's eye candy i mean i i can't even imagine what it would be to live every day and open that you know that window and get the fresh air and be in the patio and and painting there yeah i think that the external surrounding influences my work very much um, probably yeah. many people's work but definitely my work i i need to to breathe it and feel it and then project it onto a surface. Yeah. So I, and I'm very lucky. We're very, very lucky to be here. I love this place. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, if, if anyone has a question, now would be a great time to ask. I know that they're seeing and they're saying that your space is beautiful. And uh, like I said, we are so blessed that you were able to open your studio for all of us to take a peek Pleasure. and for you to show us um, what you do and how you do it every day. And um, tell us where, where can we find you? Um, where, what is the best way where we can find you? Yeah, so I've got a website uh, where it's a straightforward website showing my work. Uh, it's www.com danadion.com so it's d-a-n-a-d-i-o-n -A -A and also instagram same thing dana dion artist that's my instagram account I've got facebook as well same thing dana dion yeah oh um we have a question actually how many paintings would you do per week i wish i could do paintings per week um, i know <laughs> <laughs> that would be good i can do actually i can do quite a lot of stars in the week so if i took everything out of here and make everything white blank walls put all new canvases and new paper i would probably create about three or four starts that week and do you start mostly with uh black or do you start already with it doesn't matter it doesn't matter. i often i often start on painted canvases already um which just i painted just to get a good layer of paint because I really like the paint to be nice and juicy and thick. I don't like yeah. it very thin. Um, and I often just clean my palette. So if today I finish painting, I finish the session, I gotta go now and my table here will have a lot of paint still on it. I just take it and smear it on a new canvas. Just yeah, random. exactly. Yeah, because we don't waste paint. <laughs> we don't waste paint. Believe me, we don't waste paint. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so, um, well, anyways, I uh, wanted just to say thank you so, so much for joining me today and for, like I said, opening your doors to your heart and soul and your beautiful, beautiful setting and, and paintings and you're an incredible artist and you have become my 
dear friend as well in the process. So yes, I'm waiting for you to visit now. <laughs> yes, hopefully, hopefully after all this, we'll be able to travel and and visit each other. So thank you so so much, and thank you, uh, thank you Dana. Thank, thank you so much, and we'll see you soon. Thank, thank you. you, everyone. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. bye.